So 20 years ago, um, the, the changes that happened probably in the first decade were probably the most dark. Our, our ground cover levels came up from um, the mid 60% level up into the, about, um, about the 90s. Um, since um, Soils for Life um, have been here, we've fortunately gone through quite a few good years. So our ground cover levels have continued to rise. And with those good years, we've been able to increase our stock numbers as well. But since then, in this last 12 months, we've gone into quite a dry period. And uh, con conventionally, farmers back the feed trucks in and adjust stock and try and maintain their factory going at full production. But we've, um, as the dry season has come in, we've backed off our numbers quite considerably. We're down probably about um, just over 30% at the moment. And so that we're, we're, what I'm saying is we're trying to keep the changes that have happened um, intact. So as the ground covers come up, if we'd kept our numbers high, um, we'd be losing all the ground cover advantages we've gained. We're not hand feeding basically at all at this stage. Um, we've reduced our numbers. Our, our rainfall for the last 12 months is back about 15%. But it's the timing of the um, falls that is the really important thing. Um, unfortunately, the timing hasn't been good in spring or autumn. So our, our numbers are back well um, past that 15%. They're back about over 30%. We, we feed a bit of supplement to some of the cattle so that they'll be able to utilise the dry feed a bit more. But we um, basically we're not in a, in a feeding regime. We, we try and adjust the numbers of stock we carry to the level of feed we have. And as the feed level has de declined, we've reduced our numbers. It's probably not um, looking in the rear vision mirror and, and rushing out to do something. Um, we started planning for this when it got dry um, once it, um, in, in early autumn. So we, we've tried to lift the level of condition of all the, the ewes and cows and hopefully that will carry them through the, the winter. The main focus really um, has been to lift, lift ground cover, um, to improve the, the water cycle of the country so that when we get, um, if we get steady rain, there's very little runoff, but if you get quite a lot of rain can come in quite heavy falls. And basically you want to be able to retain as much of that as possible. Um, I think uh, the MLA had some statistics out the other day that some places with, with ground cover under 50% lose um, you know, well over 50% of their rain. And in a dry climate like this and a dry time right across the state, we need to be have, holding as much of that moisture as we can for the plants to grow and for the animals to eat and for them to us for us to make a profit. So I think the, the main thrust we've done is just, is really just to try and improve the ground cover, in, improve the infiltration of water into the soil, um, improve the organic matter, matter so that the soil doesn't evaporate, um, the, the A, the water can go in and B, it doesn't come out as quickly. And, um, and once we've started to get that happening, um, we've been able to reduce the runoff from the place quite considerably. And then the other thing we've done is um, quite a bit of work on the streams. Um, where the, most, just about every stream in New South Wales and the, the country is incised as a result of um, livestock, mostly in the um, early days and you know, overgrazing when it's happened. So we've been doing quite a bit of the Peter Andrews type work of putting the leaky weirs in. Um, this pool behind us um, is one that's probably raised about maybe um, half a metre. Um, the two pools above it, about the same. And so that when it does get um, really dry and we don't have any um, rainfall coming in, we don't have any runoff, and um, we need that water for the um, health of the river, for the, for the birds, the fish, the frogs that you can hear in the background, and the animals, um, all that water that's there is stored um, can slowly make its way downstream. We run now about 60% cattle, and um, mainly in terms of hoping to be able to grow more grass, that the cattle don't um, graze as close to the ground. And so we put the cattle into um, bigger mobs of um, up to sort of about 300 cows in, and the sheep go into mobs of um, one and a half to two and a half thousand. And we move those around um, so that each group moving about will have um, 10, uh, 12, 15 paddocks in that cycle. And um, as they move around, the, sometimes we'll have sheep and cattle um, moving. The, we don't run them together, but the, sometimes the cattle might be ahead if the grass is getting a bit higher. Sometimes the sheep might be ahead if they need a bit of a pickup before joining or something. So we, we run the mobs around, and that way all the paddocks that are not being grazed have got a chance to grow, um, to recover. And, um, and where, where the animals have been, the intensity of the animals is higher. There's a chance for seeds that are there to germinate and grow. And, um, and that, that has been the la largest thing that has lifted um, our profitability, I think. 
a lot of people think that the uh, because you're moving stock quite regularly, um, that your labour um, input goes up, that you're moving stock all the time. Well, I've, I've kept pretty detailed records of how we've allocated time, and s since we've been doing the rotational grazing, our um, time spent doing stock work is down by about 40%. It used to take about just over 300 days, p people days a year to do all the stock work, and now we do it with about um, 180, and it's, um, and it's purely because when we join the sheep, um, there's two mobs to join, whereas before we had probably 30. When you crutch them, you had 30 mobs to bring in, now we have two. And when you're checking for flies, you can check two mobs in the space of a couple of hours, whereas before it would take you two or three days. And so there's a lot of labour savings in running the mobs. So I think the first thing is, I think we grow more grass and hopefully more kilos of wool or kilos of beef to sell. And the second thing is, I think our cost of production is lower. Um, labour is the most significant cost you have um, in running a property. And um, we're able to... Um, um, run our stock with less labour and I think that's given us time since we've changed our grazing we've been we've had time to plant trees we've had time to do quite a bit of um, new fencing work and put reticulation schemes in and things so um, I think it's given us a lot more time to do other developments.